What's good y'all, we back on Planet Rail and today we have the prelude of Green Lantern War Journal. This story is written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, or known as PKJ, art by Montos, and color by Adriano Lucas. Let's get into the story. So we start here with Jon Stewart's mom, and she's reading a book in the kitchen, chilling. And I know y'all peep what's on the TV, Hal Jordan, and it looks like what Carol Ferris had on in the background in Green Lantern number one. So these moments are taking place at the same time. And if you don't know, this prelude was a backstory to Hal Jordan's new Green Lantern run written by Jeremy Adams. So now John's mom hears something outside and she goes to check it out. And she sees the one and only, her son, John Stewart. And she is very happy to see him and she wants him to stay before he goes back into space. But he like, nah, I ain't going back up there. And there are some things that have happened and he needs a break. Then his mom says she doesn't need anybody to take care of her anymore. And she knows her son. And when somebody needs a hero, he's going to leave and save them. And she is okay with that. But John tells her he not finna leave this time. And that's because he did everything that he had to do. So he believes he should be at home with his mom helping her. So I'm thinking like, okay, she's older. She might need help around the house, but it's more to it. We'll get into that later. So in the previous run of Green Lantern written by Jeffrey Thorne, John Stewart was on a path of ascension. The God of Journeys, Lonar, took John to a place in time where the new gods and the guardians of Oa was fighting against each other. Now a younger version of Darkseid was there as well, and he went by the name Euxus at the time, but I'ma just call him Young Darkseid for now. So this dude, Young Darkseid, shot one of the guardians, and John saw it was like, nah, bro, this gotta be put to an end. And of course, John and Darkseid start fighting, but John was beating up Darkseid. Then Darkseid pulled out his soul cannon and shot John. But here's when things start getting like, hey, yo, what's going on? John started changing into something. And he asked Lonar what's going on. And Lonar tells him that this is the next part of his path. Now Lonar tells him that this is evolution. Then in the next issue, in the beginning, we see John making constructs without a power ring. It's crazy because that evolution like gave him a power buff like crazy. Now another powerful thing that John did was absorb a god storm. And since John has ascended, his body was like already accepting the energy of the god storm. And since he absorbed the god storm, he met the source. And the source and the one above all from Marvel are like the same. So John is having a one on one conversation with DC's version of the one above all. Now, since the power battery blew up on Oa in the beginning of this story, John was able to restore all the Green Lantern's power rings and their powers with it. Like he even gave Hal Jordan his original ring from Abin Sur. And with this power, the source tells John that he can't even get rid of it. Like it's not a ring, it's literally him. Cause he's him. All right though, let's get back to the main story. So we here at a Green Lantern watchtower in a whole nother universe. Then we see a lantern talking to this universe's Guy Gardner, and he tells Guy that the enemies are breaking through, and we see some dead lanterns around them, so we know it's something serious. Now this lantern says it's the Radiant Dead, and Guy tells him that because Jon Stewart put an end to the Bright Revenant years ago, and he says that they're extinct. Alright boom, I'ma start here for this. So in Dark Crisis number 3, we see a whole nother world, like it's called Sector Jon Stewart. And you see Green Lantern Jason Todd, who is the Red Hood, Kyle Rayner, y'all already know him, and Natasha Irons. And she's the niece of John Irons, who is Steel. So now let's go here to this tie-in to Dark Crisis, who was also written by Philip Kennedy Johnson. The world we saw in Dark Crisis number three is the same world as this tie-in. So during the tie-in, the Green Lantern Corps were fighting against a bright revenant in the Radiant Dead, and they were losing. And Kyle Rayner got attacked by one of the Radiant Dead, and he made a distress call to John. And Kyle made that call through John's sister. But since I don't want to spoil what happens during War Journal, I'm going to talk about it then. Because I know y'all wondering, like, how did he do that? So John, of course, left, and he went to go help the Green Lanterns. They fought against the Bright Revenant and the Radiant Dead, and John ended up destroying the Bright Revenant. Now let's get back to the main story. Now the construct the Young Lantern had is about to break. 
and I know Guy is in a major amount of pain, and he tells the young lancer named Shepard that he has to protect the watchfire because if he doesn't, the light in every lantern ring will go dark, and that cannot happen. And by the way Shepard is talking, I know he's real young and like in the early stages of being a lantern. And they are the only two left. So these two right here are the remaining lanterns. Everybody else, gone. And Guy tells Shepard like Kyle Rayner ain't send you to me for no reason. You have potential. Now he tells Shepard to charge his ring on the eternal watchfire and get ready to fight. So Shepard charges his ring and we see this universe's lantern oath. I am the lantern in the dark, the torch that batters back in the night. Let evil cower in the light of all who wear the lantern's mark. Now as soon as he completes saying the oath, an explosion happens. Then Guy Gardner sees who it is. He like, dang, it is you. So Shepard was right. And Guy Gardner points his lantern ring at this person he is talking to. And this person says that they remember Guy. And this person blasts Guy back, saying that they saw him in a dream the same day their son was removed from the plane of existence. And Shepard was charging his ring, but he created this thing, bruh. I don't even know, but I just know he finna boom somebody, bruh. Like that thing looked like it'll send somebody past the afterlife. Now the person that Shepard was finna shoot at says that neither him nor Gartner deleted their son. And as you can see, they blasted Shepard away, destroying the construct he had, and says that only one person did this. Then we see dead green lanterns rise up in this new form, and the person Shepard was trying to defeat asked him, where is his master, the one they call Builder and Guardian? This person is after, John Stewart. And now we get the reveal of the Bright Revenant's mom, the Revenant Queen, and her radiant dead. And I know one thing for sure and for certain, she wants to put an end to John Stewart because he got rid of her child. But I mean, he had to get removed because he was gonna cause nothing but destruction. Also, Shepard was right about the Radiant Dead still being around. But now let's move on to part two of chapter zero, the prelude of Green Lantern War Journal. So we start here where we left off in the other universe, but John's mom on Earth Zero is talking to him. She asked where John is and it's time he came home. And as we see this dialogue, the Green Lantern Watchtower in the other universe explodes. And when I read this, I'm like, yeah, the Radiant Dead is on a mission of destruction. But now we back on Earth Zero, and John's mom was just trying to get his attention the whole time. And she tells him that every time they outside, his eyes are on the sky. And it's like he looking for a destroyed spaceship to fall from the sky. But John tells his mom that she just projecting. Then he tells her that he's done with the Green Lantern Corps and that he wants to be here with her. But his mom tells him that she listens to what people says but watches their actions. And she tells him again that his eyes are on the sky. So John changed the subject and he like, without me, you can't keep your meds straight. So we both got stuff to work on. And no cap, I would have probably done the same thing he did if my mom was cooking me like that. So then he apologizes for changing the subject and he does that because he's used to being in a high intensity environment. And if you've been reading Green Lantern like the past stuff, you know it's been crazy. But since him coming home from a high intensity environment, he had to slow down and learn how to draw the speed limit again. He feels like everything is going in slow motion and that something can just blow up at any given time, but it's not gonna happen this time. Now let's get back to Shepard and his boss battle with the Revenant Queen and the Radiant Dead. And as you can see, Guy Gardner is a part of the Radiant Dead now. So the Revenant Queen said the time of lanterns is done and that Lantern Shepherd has fought bravely, but now it's time to join the Revenant Queen and be a part of the Radiant Dead. And the Revenant Queen asked Shepard why does he keep fighting to keep the Green Lantern's eternal watchfire lit. And as Shepard fights off the Radiant Dead, he tells her it's because he swore an oath. And also, it's because that's what Jon Stewart would do. And Shepard creates this whole nother cosmic Green Lantern construct of a cannon. And he let that cannon let loose against the Radiant Dead. Side note, shout out to the people that made this story. Now the Revenant Queen just starts smacking Shepard around. And she tells him that he has a strong heart. And that he has earned the right to watch the Eternal Watch Flame go cold. And the Revenant Queen wishes 
that she was able to destroy Jon Stewart herself. Now as Shepard hits the ground after his encounter with the Revenant Queen, he looks up and sees something, and he can't believe it. And what he sees is Jon Stewart rising from the eternal watch flame. And Jon says he knew Shepard, but then he corrects himself and says that he knows his ring. And we see Shepard is like, yo, like you Jon Stewart, bruh. Nobody has seen you for a long time. Then Jon tells him that the Green Lantern Corps needed a power source. And when they lost the central power battery, Jon became the eternal watchfire to keep the towers standing and the lanterns lit. But now Jon sees that him and Shepard are the remaining Green Lanterns. And now that Jon Stewart has shown himself, the Revenant Queen is about to go after him. She wants to destroy him and Earth. Now John asks Shepard, do the Green Lantern Corps still have an oath? And Shepard tells him like, yeah, we do. So John tells him to sound off. And we see John's suit form onto him as Shepard says the oath. I am the lantern in the dark, the torch that batters back in the night. Let evil cower in the light of all who wear the lantern's mark. Now let's move on to part three. So we start here right where we left off. And Shepard has a dialogue while we see him and Jon Stewart fighting the Radiant Dead. And Shepard says, if you asked him as a kid or at any age who he wanted to be when he grew up, there would have been only one answer. His answer would have been his world's first real superhero. And he says that he's still the greatest. By now, y'all should already know that his answer is Jon Stewart, the guardian of the Green Lantern Corps. Now as Shepard sees everything that John just did, he gets hit with like a sense of reality because the legends of John Stewart don't equate to the real life John Stewart. He wears no ring because he is the ring. He's him. John constructs no uniform, but instead he reconstructs his own skin and that makes him indestructible and he can adapt to anything. John doesn't make a lot of tools and weapons, but he constructs cities, civilizations, armies and unstoppable unkillable warriors and john goes to attack the revenant queen and shepherd says that the revenant queen and her radiant dead never stood a chance against john so now they are face to face and the revenant queen says she would never forget john's words from long ago and she says that she will never forgive his betrayal and when i read that i was like Cause what do you mean by betrayal? Like what did y'all have going on in the past? But John tells her, there is one nice thing about being dead. She doesn't have to do a thing. Then he raises his spear, but she like, I ain't finna die today. And that her radiant dead might not destroy this earth, but there are many others. And she's about to leave, like teleport away. And she swears to John that the radiant dead will claim him and his world. Now, as she leaves through this portal, it looked like it caused an explosion as it closed and it made John just fly back. And now he's salty that she gone, but he tells Shepard that they're not finished. Now Shepard is telling John like, yo, she spoke as if she knew you, but he cuts him off and he tells Shepard that she escaped into the multiverse and that they will find her. And Shepard tells John that she can be anywhere in the multiverse. How can we find her? And John says that she left a trail and she left a trail from her ring. And Shepard like, what you mean by her ring? And of course, John didn't answer the question, so I'm wondering what's up. But he tells Shepard that the Earth survived because of him and that he will be the new foundation of the new Green Lantern Corps. But John is talking about the ring she had on right here. And of course, Shepard wasn't gonna see it because he wasn't fighting against her. So now John is going to rebuild the Green Lantern Corps and Shepard is going on his first mission on another world to find the Revenant Queen. And to begin that mission, he will have to find that universe's Jon Stewart. And that's because the Revenant Queen will hunt him down. Now let's travel back to Earth Zero. And Jon is talking to Guy, and he tells him that he built a shed and his mom did the flowers. Now Guy asks him, like, you really staying home, huh? And Guy knows that Jon's mom is going through things health-wise. Then Jon cuts Guy off and he asks him, how many people did you serve with that did it for so long that they aren't fit? to do anything else anymore. 
But Guy just gives John a look. Then John brings up when his mom told him that every time they're outside, his eyes are on the sky. And she was right. And John is going through it because his mom is going through the end of life phase. And he says it's just different from the stuff that Green Lanterns deal with. Now as John and Guy look up to the sky, John says that he wish he was back up there dealing with problems that he can shoot at. And John's mom knows that he wants that too. But John needs to keep his eyes on what's in front of him. And Guy tells him that it's going to be hard to replace him. And John tells him that if it's one thing that he's learned from being in the Green Lantern Court, nobody is irreplaceable. Then he gives Guy some comfort and encouragement by telling Guy that there is nothing that they can't do without him. Now we got this ring right here from outer space. And when I read this a while ago, I didn't know what it was or where it came from, but it did remind me of the star sapphire ring. And I will tell y'all that y'all will see this ring again. Hey man, I hope y'all enjoyed this prelude of Green Lantern War Journal. We will have the main series coming soon. So y'all stay tuned. Y'all have a great and blessed day. God bless. I'm out.